But one of the things that's interesting about your career is you find yourself uh, at the intersection of interesting places with interesting people. You find yourself at Goldman Sachs. You become the CEO around the time the company goes public. So and I want to ask you this question. That's 1999. The question is, Goldman Sachs and other banks go public around the same time. They go from partnerships to publicly traded companies. And concurrent with that, the speed of business grew very quickly. The size of deals grew fast. The speed of every deal grew. And then we had big market changes. Then we had bubbles. Then you found yourself as the Treasury Secretary when some of those bubbles burst. What can you share with us about having watched and to some extent been part of the mechanism that created those wild markets and then finding yourself in the position to unwind it? Well, well first of all, let me say something about Goldman Sachs going public. You're wrong. Goldman Sachs did not go public the same time the other firms did. Other firms all went public way ahead of Goldman Sachs. And you know, I think many of them went public uh, because they had a chance to make a lot of money. Uh, Goldman Sachs resisted that, and then what we found is the business changed, and, and as the business globalized, we almost lost the firm because we didn't have permanent capital. And uh, given the size of the business, the size of positions that you needed to, to, to take in terms of doing the market making a role that Goldman Sachs was led to do by our clients, and so. We went public. I, I actually had voted against going public at the time we, the partners decided because I didn't think we were quite ready to go at that time. But we went, and actually I think that going public the way we did it at Goldman Sachs was something that helped the challenge that we had at Goldman Sachs was how do you become as big as we were and keep a special culture because size can be the enemy of excellence. And what going public let us do was let us have a much bigger group of people become shareholders because we spread it, the ownership very broadly when we went, went public. And then we maintained as much as we could of the partnership culture. And uh, we still selected partners every two years. We signed an agreement with them that had their, their compensation, you know, their, their percentage be set every, every couple of years. And it was very helpful to me in running the firm to have the top people running the businesses be big shareholders and be compensated based upon how the firm did. And the other thing which we did at Goldman Sachs, and because I, I'd watched liquidity disappear very quickly uh, when the Continental Bank went down and I you know I was that was a client that I'd worked with when I was in Chicago and watched what happened to certain firms in 94 and 98 in the US we kept huge amounts of liquidity at Goldman Sachs so we had at the time I left we had 60 billion dollars of unencumbered treasuries at a lockbox at Bank of New York to get to your to your question about what I'd seen in terms of the excesses. When I, and I tell the story in the documentary, that the, the first session I had with President Bush was at Camp David in 2006, and he'd asked uh, me to talk with his economic team about entitlement reform, which was one of the things that had attracted me. <coughs> and I asked for permission to talk about uh, what I thought was the possibility of a financial crisis while we were in office. Now, I didn't see anything like it happened, but it, w when, when we talked about it, he said what would create it, and I pointed to the complexity of securities. I talked a lot about credit default swaps and derivatives and hedge funds and so on. I didn't talk about the mortgage market. And when he said to me, now, what will cause the crisis when it comes, I remember saying to him, I don't know, sir, but after it happens, it'll be obvious with 2020 hindsight. I didn't see the Russian default. I didn't see some of these, see some of these other things. But it was clear to me <coughs> that excesses had been building up in the markets.